be because the DCEU sucks ass. Everyone knows it sucks ass. And I just don't feel like putting myself through that torture. Even if I Patreoned it? You wouldn't. Oh, I would. And next week, you're going to be reviewing Batman v Superman with me. One is the Dark Knight of Gotham, protecting the streets from thugs, clowns, and an assortment of villainy. The other is the bringer of hope, the last son of Krypton, and the beacon of humanity we have left. And the two of them fighting each other honestly sounds freaking awesome. It's been done multiple times within the comics, and even has an animated film for it. But, when we finally get a live-action film for Batman beating up Superman, what we s instead got was a convoluted mess that was a jump start to a franchise that hadn't begun yet. So bear with me as we dive into Batman vs. Superman. The Ultimate Edition! Our movie begins with yet again another look at childhood Bruce Wayne and his tragedy set to the opening credits. And skip. What do you mean skip? We don't need another retelling of Batman's backstory. We've seen it in every live action film. We've noticed it in almost every animation. There's no reason to bring it up or at least show it. Everyone knows Bruce Wayne's parents were killed. Period. End of story. So skip. No, but could have left it on for Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Even Morgan doesn't warrant watching the Waynes get murdered again. We then get one of the few logical things in this film, connecting the DCEU together by showing us how Bruce handles the destruction of the fight between Zod and Superman from Man of Steel, which is basically him driving around Metropolis, seeing people in a panic, watching his entire Wayne building being destroyed as he helps save a couple of people, including a little girl whose mother was in the destroyed building. Hey, at least you'll have your next orphan to watch over. What? what I say? We go to 18 months later as divers bring up a piece of kryptonite from the ocean before jumping Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen meeting up in a desert to interview a terrorist leader. While they are doing so, one of the men breaks Jimmy's camera and opens it, revealing a tracker, revealing that Olsen is in fact CIA, in which then he is shot. Jimmy Olsen is, one of, is a major character with and for Superman. I mean, you can't have Clark Kent if you don't have Jimmy Olsen. They work, both work in the Daily planet it's just why show a major superman character if you're going to kill him off five minutes later that just seems like a waste of potential i'm more concerned over the fact that they destroyed a perfectly good camera the shooting begins as one side turns on the other with lois captive superman eventually shows up and saves her like usual but because of the situation and chaos, Superman is of course blamed for the attack that killed so many people. Meanwhile in Gotham, the GCPD investigate yet another Batman sighting, and we see that Batman has begun branding his villains. Oh, Jesus Christ. He branded him. I mean, we already have the bat boat, the bat mobile, the bat truck repeller. Why not bat thug? Like the Joker says, not Jared Leto. Without Batman, crime has no punchline. But 
Without thugs, Batman wouldn't have anything to do. Merchandising. Lois begins to contemplate everything that happened as Clark tries to reassure her that things will be alright. While at the Batcave, Bruce and Alfred discuss how much he has changed since Superman appeared and the information he knows on KG Beast. At LexCorp, however, the Senator meets with Lex Luthor and is shown that Lex has a piece of kryptonite already and just needs her approval to bring in more from another country to build a weapon against the Kryptonians. See, one of my gripes about this film is that Jesse Eisenberg is promoted as Lex Luthor, but his character acts more like the psychotic Lex Jr. within the comics. At least to me, anyway. So, my question is, when he mentions his father in this scene, is he alluding to the fact that he is Lex Jr., or is he talking about Lionel? Because, to me, Eisenberg just doesn't fit the Luther persona. But isn't there a point in the comics where, like, back a long time ago, where Lex Luthor had hair but lost it because of Superman. Like, at in this point, it would be because he was put in jail or whatnot. And back then, it was like some sort of, like, acid or something like that. I can't, I can't remember. But I remember the fact of, it, of him having hair before, but he lost it. Yeah, in the Silver Age, they say while he was a teenager and Clark was a teenager. Lo lo yeah, in the Silver Age, when Lex and Clark were teenagers, they were supposedly... Yeah, when Lex and Superboy were... Teenagers, they claim Superboy was responsible for a chemical explosion that lost Lex's hair. But, they're still stupid. Lex is then given the permission he requested so he can experiment with Zod's dead body. Wallace, from the building collapsing in the beginning, decides it's time to show the world what Superman really is, as he vandalizes a statue of the hero. Clark heads to Gotham and learns of the Batman through feared-filled civilians, while Bruce pays a visit to the KG Beast in a fight club. Clark feels they should be covering the Batman story, but White thinks... Crime wave in Gotham. Other breaking news. Water wet. And in other news, I almost fell asleep getting to this part within the script. Which shows you how boring this movie really is. Well, maybe you should get one of those five-hour energies. That way, you're running with sugar. Literally. Don't lie. You know it's fucking boring. But shows the info she knows about the bullets and requests the trip so she can prove her theories to correct it all. While Clark is told to go to a function by personal request. At Luther Manor, the senator once again meets with Lex as he compares Superman to a devil and a monster, while Bruce has a nightmare. Bruce thinks that Lex is this white Portuguese leader and learns he has been invited to the same thing as Clark was. So we then head to that event where Clark acts like he doesn't know who the second richest person in the DC Universe is right before Bruce uses it, it as a chance to snoop around his home to find any clues about what's going on. Lex introduces the two of them to each other. How are we? Lex. Hello. Good. Hi. Hello. Lex, it is a pleasure. Ow! Wow! That is a good grip. You should not pick a fight with this person. <laughs> Future plot things! You really hate this film, don't you? No, I want to make love to this movie while yelling Martha the whole time. Yes, I hate this movie! As Bruce heads to grab his transfer device, he's followed by a woman in red while Clark heads off to save people from a burning building and giving us one of the most iconic scenes from the film as the surrounding people reach up to him to touch their savior before getting a short montage of Superman saving lives.
While Lois continues her bullet lead, Clark investigates the Bat brand. Lex visits our paraplegia, giving him a reason to freshen up. Meanwhile, Bruce and the woman from the other night with him questioning why she took the device, only for her to say it's not his business before jumping to a random dream sequence that is supposed to be a dystopian future filled with demons and men beating the shit out of Batman while Superman acts like he does from the Injustice this series before the Flash shows up out of nowhere and warns Bruce that Lois is the key and to not trust Superman. Okay, so here's one of my gripes for the film. This specific scene just shows up. It feels 100% out of place. One second he's at his computer, the next we're into the dream sequence, then he meets the Flash, and then he wakes up. I don't know if it's supposed to be presenting what is going to happen in future films because it didn't happen in Justice League, or if the writers just completely forgot that they made this scene, it, it just feels out of place to me. So that being said, let's finish this shit. Batman finally gets the info he's been looking for by learning the white Portuguese is actually a ship carrying the kryptonite, and Alfred seems to be the only voice of reason as he tries to convince Bruce he's being stupid by feeling that killing Superman is the only option. Meanwhile, as the docks, we finally see something interesting happen as Batman tracks down KG Beast and does all he can to stop them until Superman shows up. The first confrontation is cut short as Superman warns Batman to quit doing what he's doing, all while Bats ask him if he's human enough to bleed, while Lex wins and has the kryptonite. The Senator then goes on TV and invites Superman to a hearing in order to defend himself. Meanwhile, Lois is given all of the information about what really happened at the desert, and that the whole thing was just a setup by Lex to frame Superman. Cause of course it was. During the committee hearing, we see all the parties involved doing what they are setting out to do, and as the senator stutters on her words, a bomb goes off. I'm done. Okay, I'm done. An hour and a half, and they haven't even actually fought yet. This film is nothing but padding. And I'm just done. I'm done. I'm done. Superior critic? Where'd you go? Cuz? Hello? Oh boy.